with brutal military precision or crude propaganda. Yugoslav President Milosevic emptied the province of Kosovo. But what does Kosovo really mean to the Serbian people? Why did war break out? Can there ever be lasting peace there again? Kosovo is a southern province of Serbia. The republics of Montenegro and Serbia make up what's left of today's Yugoslavia. Until a few years ago, Kosovo was a place most of us had never heard of. In 1999, it would become the target of both ethnic cleansing and the biggest NATO bombardment since World War II. Across the world, Kosovo became synonymous with hell on earth. Images of ethnic Albanian refugees streaming by the hundreds of thousands out of Kosovo to a tenuous safety were seared into our minds. Old or young, no one was spared Slobodan Milosevic's cruel hand. In the refugee camps, survivors told stories of brutal treatment at the hands of Serbs who broke down their doors and told them to leave. <laughs> When they go into a house and they see a woman with gold, they say, come on, take it off, and they take it. For two minutes, I don't want to see you in the house anymore. We didn't take anything except the clothes we were wearing. And they said that, why are you waiting so long? The trains and buses are already ready for you. They are waiting in Kosovo Podia to take you out, so leave as soon as possible. Lucky for us, they didn't kill anybody. They had big, big guns. They had black mas masks and black gloves. And uh, they had uh, bloody knives. From the moment on, we were refugees. All these refugees walking to the center of the city were thrown with stones, with glasses, with who knows what from the Serb pot. These civilians, some of them went out in the streets and shouted, Go to hell. This is what you deserve. No one could deserve the fate that befell this woman. Mahana Sinajas recounts the death of her two grandchildren as they awaited deportation from Kosovo's largest town, Pristina. I heard someone saying, the child is dead. The child is dead. He was my son's child. The second child in her care was crushed to death in the crowd. Someone in the crowd said, hang on, hang on, he's still alive. The police were kicking his body backwards and forwards. They said, don't bother to come closer. Just feed it to the dogs, because he's just another Albanian kid. And the Albanians have plenty of kids. But the dogs are hungry. Feed it to the dogs. Towns like Pristina, were emptied street by street. Women were raped, the Albanian men taken away. A familiar pattern was emerging. They planned uh, long before, you know, because we heard this part of Pristina, because telephones were working still. So that part was expelled, another part. So even we know our turn. In a safe house in Macedonia, Women and children speculate on the fate of their missing husbands and fathers and describe how they were ethnically cleansed by the Serb paramilitaries. Everywhere, the Serb police gathered the women and children together from the four corners of Pristina to the centre. They were always kicking us, pushing us around. Even in our own houses, they used to storm in, beat us, swear at us, see us fall, make us get up again, watch us in the bathrooms, and more which I'm too ashamed to say. It was this systematic barbarity which spurred NATO's intervention. You determine that there is uh, insurgent forces in a village, so you drive the people out, burn the village, shell their houses, kill their cattle, chop down their fruit trees. I mean, it's, it's really a, a sort of medieval approach to things. 
To understand how this medieval approach resurfaced, how Milosevic whipped up such anti-Albanian hatred, we must turn to the past. For Kosovo was the heartland of medieval Serbia. Although Kosovo today is 90% ethnic Albanian and largely Muslim, its mountains enclose some of the oldest and most beautiful of the Serbian Orthodox Christian churches. In a 14th century Serbian monastery, images of Turkish brutality towards Christians adorn the walls. The Ottoman Turks achieved a strategic European victory by defeating the Serbs at Kosovo Field in 1389. Serbian nationalists today view Kosovo as a kind of Serbian Palestine. The Serbian Orthodox Church in Kosovo insists there can be no question of Kosovo being separated from Serbia. For a couple of years, we've been going around the world to Europe, Russia and America, telling people Kosovo is the cradle of the Serbian people, of Serbian culture and spirituality. For more than a thousand years, the church has been in this region. In Kosovo, there are more than a thousand churches and monasteries that our forefathers have built from the 12th century up till today. There are more than 1,300 Christian churches and monasteries that our forefathers have built od 12. veka pa do danas. Milosevic began to awaken dormant Serbian passions for Kosovo as he rose to power in the late 80s. He's known to rely closely on the advice of his wife, Mira Markovic, herself no friend of democracy. Our biggest wish is for all people in Yugoslavia to live together, to live in equality and harmony. Meanwhile, the Serb propaganda machine was busy exploiting Serbia's historical link to Kosovo. We can't imagine the Serbs, and here I am a Serb, I can't imagine uh, my own definition of what I am as a Serb without having that reference, and that is also. The message struck a chord with ordinary rural Serbs living in Kosovo and feeling outnumbered. Look, all these parts, as far as you I can see, up to the mountains, all of this is Serbian Serbs are living here, Albanians never lived here. Even today, Serbs are under pressure to emigrate and leave this land where they've lived for centuries. Moma Trajkovic is the manager of this collective farm, bringing his work as a beer. In the late 1980s, Trajkovic was deputy president of Serbia. He went on to lead the Serbian resistance movement in Kosovo. Serbs, he said, would never be defeated. The stubborn insistence of Albanians for a new Albanian state on this Serbian territory means nothing else that leads towards war. For us, we're strong enough at the local level to give the Albanians an answer. Many Serbs, like Mona, still believe they're the last bastion against Islam. Milosevic exploited the church's links with Kosovo to mask his ultra-nationalist agenda. But parts of the Orthodox Church are long-standing critics of Milosevic, even calling on him repeatedly to resign. 